would please uh, turn to the book of Ephesians, to the second chapter. Then also turn to Galatians chapter 3. We're going to go in two books tonight. Wouldn't it be great if we could make everything suit us? I don't think that would be great. I think it would be pretty neat. Wouldn't have nothing to fuss about that. No, that's true. Uh, we, uh, unfortunately, we live in a time when everybody's trying to make everything fit their own mold. And we attempt to put a square peg in a round hole. Any of you ever done that? People have been doing it for years. They do it in jest about uh, some of the things that are said in God's Word. Uh, you all remember that Moses played tennis. Y'all remember that? The Bible says that Moses served in Pharaoh's court. Uh, you also know that the early church got along real well. And they grow upon us. Went from one place to another in Hollywood. Because the, yeah, the Bible says, all in one accord. <laughs> we would like to change some of the things that God's Word tells us and make it fit our situation in life. But before <coughs> you can say that Jesus Christ is Lord, you have to experience Him. And I mean really say that Jesus Christ is Lord. You have to experience Him through one thing, and that's faith. Sometimes our faith is shaken. Sometimes things that happen in our lives and in the lives of people around us and in society that shakes our faith to the, to the very nth degree. I told you this morning about being in a meeting with some of the pastors for, for this side of the association. And Brother John Robertson, I didn't tell you his name, but Brother John Robertson uh, at Woodson, uh, when he made the statement that How many Woodland has on Sunday morning? They only have one service. He said we have between two and twenty. And you know, it'd be very tempting when you're down to two for several Sundays to just chuck it all and go home. But I got the impression that there were people there that that had faith. And it doesn't really matter whether God's people and, and uh, His church have two or twenty. What matters is they have faith in the God that sent Jesus Christ to die on the cross of Calvary. But there are folks, even in Bible times, who tried to confuse the issue about what called or what brought about salvation. Some of you are going to say, well, I've heard this before. Well, I'm beginning to wonder whether we actually hear it. I'm beginning to wonder whether we just sat through it and we don't actually hear it. So whether it's a repeat performance or what, we're going to go over it again. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 says this, for by grace are you saved, have you been saved, through faith. And that not of yourself, it is the gift of God. Salvation comes by faith in Jesus Christ. 
We don't get it by studying our Bible, although the Bible points us to, to Christ. We don't get it because we come to church every Sunday morning and Sunday night and Wednesday night and sit on the pew and, and uh, absorb what's going on. Some people don't uh, absorb much because they sometimes sleep through the sermon. Uh, I was watched Channel 2 News this past week you saw there was a clip of a preacher that, that just lost it in the pulpit. And of course it went by when anything has to do with the church, anything has to do with the preacher. How many saw it? It went by. And the one thing that, that it, uh, I thought I might do sometime here is to go a little viral and, but I'll have to get them to cut the, the camera off so it won't show up on YouTube. <laughs> but uh, he came out of the pulpit and, and went, went and looked at, at a, a guy and woke him up. And uh, uh, when he, when he after got through waking him up, he said, now some of you people are going to think that, well, he won't be back anymore. He said, well, that's all right. He said, he's not here now anyway because he's asleep. We'd like to We'd like to change things so that it fits our mold. For by grace are you saved. Grace, grace comes from Christ. We're saved by grace. And if we accept it by faith, you can't touch it, you can't feel it, you can't smell it, you can't hear it. But you know it deep in your soul. Jesus is called. And when we respond by faith, we, we, and we do a lot of things by faith. We, we do a lot of things. We, we, we live most of our life by faith. We have faith in everything. You know, I've used the example many times. You come in here every Sunday, Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night, you plop down on that pew. You have no idea whether I've come in here and solved the things in the hand. You sit on them by faith. You haven't looked to see if the floor is still in the pit You stood by faith. We get in our car and we start it up and we head down the road. We don't know whether our brake lines are good or bad or indifferent. We get in them by faith. We do a lot of things by faith. Why can't we understand that salvation comes to us through faith? In fact, the big question today, and even, even in Bible times, was this. How can a person find a place of favor and acceptance in the sight of God? That's always been a, a big, big question for a lot of people. And we, we look at things and we begin to, to add our own things and we try to change the facts. You ever try to change the facts? These are the facts. Doesn't matter how you how you shake them out. Doesn't matter whether you turn them upside down or, or right side up. The fact is the fact. That's the way it is. And in Jesus' day, the Judaizers uh, claimed that addition, addition to trusting Christ as Lord, people must also observe the law of Moses and to worship in a tradition of the Father. Where do you think they picked that at? Well, some of those those early converts were Jews. They were, were Jews who had, had accepted Christ as Savior and Lord, and maybe for one thing or another, they, they just weren't comfortable with the faith aspect, so they added a little bit to it. And they began to say that we've got to observe the law. Question for you. Did the law ever save him? No. But what these folks were really saying was this, that the death of Jesus on the cross and his resurrection from the dead was an all you need or justification in the sight of God. We want to do something. 
We want to participate in our own salvation. We want to change the facts so that we feel better. In Galatians chapter 3, and I told you to mention that, so I hope you move there, because most of our scriptures come from Galatians chapter 3. In, that, in those verses of scripture that we're going to look at tonight, Paul gives us a number of proofs in support of the emphasis that he was placing on ju uh, justification in the sight of God through faith in Christ Jesus, plus nothing. Wouldn't it be neat if you could come and pay the preacher a hundred dollars? Boy, that'd be nice. That'd be nice. Or a thousand dollars. What would it be worth to you to be saved? How much would you pay to be saved? Would you pay ten thousand, a hundred thousand? I bet you would. Wouldn't it be nice to know that you could just walk in a church and the preacher, but, but oh, we better take cash. No credit cards or checks. No cash. We have to take cash. No credit cards or checks. We take that. And after accepting that, we would say some magical incantation, and you'd be saved. We'd have people lined up out the door. But folks, faith is what saves you. I can't save you. Brother Allen can't save you. Brother Bobby can't save you. Shoot, even Connie can't save you. It's all about faith. Faith in Jesus Christ who died on the cross of God. In Galatians chapter 3, here we're going to cover a few things really quick. First thing I want to show you is that the gift of the Holy Spirit is by faith. Look at verses 1 through, through 3. O foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you that you should not obey the truth? Before whose eyes Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed among you to respect. This only, I, this only I want to learn from you. Did you receive the Spirit by the works of the law or by the, or by the hearing of faith? Are you so foolish, having begun in the Spirit, are you now being made perfect by the flesh? Paul saying, I want to know. I want to know whether you received the Spirit by the law or by faith. The law hadn't given us much of anything over the years. It was, it was a hard thing to do. In fact, no one I know could, uh, could live by the law. Would you live by it? No, I couldn't. You couldn't. I didn't even try. But I can live by faith. And the Holy Spirit calls us. There's not much said much anymore about the Holy Spirit. It used to be called the Holy Ghost. Exactly. Not much said, said about that anymore. It scares people to know that there's a spirit floating around in, in the church. And, and he, he, by the way, he sat beside you in case you didn't know that. And, but it kind of scares people when you talk about the Spirit. But the Holy Spirit of God does speak to us. He's spoken to me, and I'm sure he's spoken to a lot of you sitting in this, in this room tonight. And he's called you to certain things. The first thing that he called you to do was he called you to repentance. Somewhere down the line in, in your, your life, if you know Jesus Christ now as your personal Savior, the Holy Spirit worked in your life to call you to repentance. And from that day forward, from the time that you accepted his call, the Holy Spirit has been guiding you. Have you ever done something and somewhere in your head you, you hear this little voice that says you shouldn't have done that or don't do that? Television will portray it as a little angel or a little devil sitting on your shoulder. 
Well, the devil does it all the time. The devil tries to get us to change the facts. He tries to, to skew the information so that we will change the facts. On the other hand, the little angel is trying to keep us straight in there with our eyes firmly closed and closed on Jesus. So the Holy Spirit works in us to change our lives and we are saved by the hearing of faith and not by the law. Paul declared that the presence of the Spirit in lives was a, a proof that justification is by Christ Jesus. If it was by the law, we wouldn't be called by the Spirit. The second thing that Paul talks about is uh, the gifts of the Spirit are by faith. God gives us gifts. He gives us gifts through the Holy Spirit. Look at verse 5. Therefore, he who supplies the Spirit to you and works miracles among you, does he do it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? The miracles of the Bible. Some of you are pretty good Bible scholars. The miracles of the Bible, were they a result of the law or were they a result of faith? The ones I've read are a result of faith can't deny. You can't change the facts and make it say something that, it, that, that it's, that's not there. It's not by the works of the law that, that the Spirit is empowered. It's by faith. <clears throat> Folks, you and I have had miracles in our lives that, that happened, that God has placed there. It wasn't because the law said that. It was because it was a gift of the Spirit. Paul moves on a little further down into to the verses in chapter 3. If you'll look back at uh, uh, verses 6 through 9, these verses talk about Abraham. When Abraham was approached by God, was he approached by the law or was he approached by the Spirit? Did Abraham follow the leadership by the law? Or did he follow by faith? Abraham was asked to just pack it up and leave everything, wasn't he? And the promise that it was made to him that was that he would that God would make him a, a great nation. Let's just read it. Just as Abraham believed God and and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Therefore know that only those who are of, of faith are sons of Abraham. And the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith preached the gospel to Abraham beforehand, saying, In you all nations shall be blessed. That's not a writing about the law, is it? So then, those who are of faith are blessed with believing All nations are going to be blessed by Abraham. Folks, Paul, Paul confirms the promise that was made to Abraham that what he was doing was by faith. Faith, you can't touch it, you can't see it, you can't smell it, you can't taste it. Faith is something that we must have. Jesus Christ. If faith produces salvation, what does the law produce? The law produces death. The law was kind of a guide post for us. But in the end, if we messed up in the law, death was waiting for us. So the law produces condemnation rather than justification. Look down in verses 10 through 14. For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. That's not very good news, is it? For it is written, Cursed is everyone who does not continue in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. You're cursed. If you don't do everything that's written in the law, you are cursed. There's no justification. 
justification. There is no salvation. There is no hope in the law. I know every single one of you sitting in this room tonight has probably broken the law in one way or another in the last week. The law of the land. You're saying, no, I didn't do that. I bet somebody in this room went over 45 miles an hour on 280 to get here tonight. Over the Allen said he did. We broke the law. There's no way in the world that you and I can follow the law explicitly. That's the reason we have attorneys, I guess. To argue the point. And you know it, it, it it's, it's their job to try and change the facts around. David's wife. <laughs> just passed the bar. So we've got an attorney in the family. I, re I retained her. I gave her a dollar when she graduated from law school. <laughs> and, and by the way, I, she, she went to work in Murfreesboro and, and she's coming to Woodbury. She's going to, she's going to uh, be in court Tuesday. Judy said you need to go down there and see how well she did. But the job of an attorney is to get their, their, their client off, and the way they do it is they, Brother Phillips said it in life, they, they readjust the facts. I don't know whether any of you have followed the uh, George Zimmer, Trayvon Martin case in Florida, but there's one side, the other side, going back and forth, adjusting the facts, trying to make them fit the prosecution or, or the defense. And it comes down to a, a point where a jury, I think it's six people in Florida, are going to make a determination whether he's guilty or not. Six women. Six women. Going to, going to make that determination. Well, I've always said, I've, I've never had to go to jury duty. I got close once. But I never had to go. But I told you, I said, what I'm going to tell them if, I, if they interview me, hang on. <laughs> no matter what it is, we're going to hang them. We can't, the law brings condemnation to us. It, it curses us. Let's move on down. Cursed is everyone who does not continue in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. But that no one is justified by the law in the sight of God is evident, for the just shall live by faith. Yet the law is not a thing, but the man who does them shall live by them. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree, that the blessings of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the purpose of the Spirit, of the promise of the Spirit through faith. In short, to be justified by the law would be necessary for us to keep every single bit of it down to the end of the earth. No one in the past or in the present has been able to do that. You may be better than most people, but I don't think you are. Paul goes on to affirm that the blessing of Abraham comes through faith in Christ Jesus, who suffered for our sin on the cross, dying to redeem us from the curse of the law. Someone had to pay the price. The law is the law. Someone had to pay the price. Jesus paid it all for us. Paul also affirms that we become children of God through faith in Christ rather than in keeping the law of Moses. Folks, sometimes we think faith is a joke. Faith is not a joke. Faith in Jesus Christ changes the lives of people. 
We're all the time talking about things that change our lives. We're talking about procedures in, in medicine that have been developed that have changed people's lives. But the one change that, that is most important is the change that comes from knowing Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. And you can't know Jesus through the law. You can only know Jesus through faith. We need to get out of the false uh, direction of, of trying to make the facts fit what we want and get back to listening to what God has to say and, let, and knowing that it's faith that makes a difference. We can't be good enough. We can't be smart enough. We can't be rich enough. We have to rely on faith. Galatians 3.26 says, For you are all sons of God, through faith in Jesus Christ. I hope and pray that's true of everyone here tonight. I hope and pray that everyone here knows Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ is Lord of all. But maybe that's not the truth. And if it is, you need to know Jesus by faith. The Spirit calls, the Spirit beckons you. He's calling the night. It's time to respond. Father, thank you for, again, for your love and mercy. Help us to, to forget about the things of this world, how, and how we sometimes try to change the facts. Heavenly Father, help us to get back to the, the simple childlike faith that's required of each and every one of us to come to know Jesus. Father, I, I pray that, uh, that we can put aside our, our thoughts and, and just get back to that, that simple way of knowing Jesus. Christ as our Savior. I pray tonight, Heavenly Father, that, that the Holy Spirit continues to call people to repentance, whether it's here or somewhere else. I pray, Heavenly Father, that people will have a good sense to listen to what the Holy Spirit is leading us to do. I pray, dear God, that, that we will just uh, exercise our faith each day and just let you be the Lord of our life. And Heavenly Father, I pray tonight that as we sing the song of invitation, someone here that needs to come and maybe come and pray, maybe come and rededicate their life, maybe come and accept Christ as Savior Lord, whatever the reason might be, if there's a need, every Father call them to, to this, uh, this altar. Father, I pray now that you would bless us as we sing, for we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. God has spoken to you this morning, or this tonight, or maybe this past week, God has spoken to you in a, in a special way, and that still small voice is is calling you to, to faith in Jesus Christ. Now is the time to acknowledge it. You can acknowledge it by simply coming and, and we'll, we'll, we'll pray together, we'll talk together. We're going to let Jesus, we're going to let the Holy Spirit work. And it's by faith, not by words, not by law.